You know that old rhyme, first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes baby in the baby carriage. Well, that uh, there's a study that basically says that rhyme, it's a little out of date these days, especially if you're a working uh, or lower class woman. The study found that more than half of those first time moms are not married. And that is just one of the statistics that we found here in the study by the National Marriage Foundation called Not Yet, the cost of delayed marriage in America. So why are we seeing more babies in, in 20 somethings and fewer wedding rings. Let me bring this panel in. Rita Davis, Atlanta correspondent for CocoFab.com, reality TV personality Rebecca Carden, comedian and host of the Paul Mercurio podcast, Mr. Paul Mercurio, and Chris Freight back with us. So um, I, I did a little check in the commercial break. So it sounds like the ladies, myself included, you know, not married. The guys are. So well, you know, we can make this kind of personal. We don't have to go there. But uh, uh, to, to the ladies, let me just ask you this. You know, um, why do you think this whole thing is about how people are waiting later to get married? Why do you think people are waiting later, later to get married, if at all, these days? I personally think that marriage is an ill-conceived, antiquated institution that was wow. created by people that didn't live past 30. So sure, you could conceivably look at somebody and say, I will be with you for the rest of my life because that's like five years. Um, it makes perfect sense. So I, I just, I don't know. I think the urgency is, is not as where it used to be. We don't need men as much as we used to. And women are uh, starting to see the cracks. Oh, hey, Paul, Brooke, go ahead. Brooke, I, I think, <laughs> Brooke, I think we deglamorize uh, marriage in this culture. I mean, look at Real Housewives. That show... That makes that makes marriage look like the Hunger Games, okay? I mean, you know, and, and I yeah, so I don't think it's the kind of thing that anybody wants to live up to. Uh, and so I agree on some level, marriage might be the issue, but also the issue is I think these people that are having these babies out of wedlock feel disenfranchised. In other words, economically they're sort of depressed. They don't have sort of the the, the opportunities that maybe more well-educated people have. So I blame Congress in some way for leaving these people out in the cold. And I think there's a lesson here. Like in uh, sex ed class, they have uh, kids carry around babies so that they know what it's like baby dolls so they know what it's like to take care of a baby I think congressmen should have to carry around like 20 something dolls so they know what it's like to take care of a 20 something year old and then if the if the doll goes below the poverty line they have to li listen to a lecture by Nancy Pelosi you, that's you, my idea. you had me with Congress I was waiting I was trying to understand where you were going for every okay <laughs> I'm kind of with you but actually to your point this is something I read in this in this article it was in the Wall Street Journal to your point about maybe feeling disenfranchised so here's the quote many whose jobs do do not give them membership in the professional class turn to a traditional source of young adult identity parenthood for meaning for satisfaction so young women often drift unintentionally into parenthood with men whom they believe are not good enough to marry or not ready for it so there is a trend here and it's it's tougher for middle-class Americans but then when you look at the if you read this article it talks about look if you know if you're you're college educated it's actually a pretty sweet deal Right. And Brooke, I think this has to do a lot more with economics than anything else. When yes. you look at uh, some of the challenges of uh, lower middle class and working class uh, 20-somethings, they don't have a, they have a high school diploma, but probably no college or just some college. Uh, and particularly for men who are low skilled, uh, their wages are declining. They're not exactly, uh, the, they don't have the best prospects. And women are realizing that. And while they are kind of hooking up and maybe having babies with these folks, they're not staying together. Uh, in a traditional family structure. And then there and are the what, repercussions for the babies. And then there's the repercussions for the baby, and you start this cycle all over again. Whereas if you have a say. college education, if you have a college education, you're, you're building a career, you're building a foundation, and then you wait until you are set before maybe you go look for a mate. And those are two very different things we're seeing uh, between the classes right now in America. Rita, I, I want to hear from a, you. Hold, just a minute. Rita, I haven't heard from you. What, what, you get the final word on this one. Absolutely. You know what? I think, you know, the media pretty much much has made this big fascination, you know, with baby, the celebrity baby, celebrity baby bumps, and just, you know, the different sightings and whatnot. And, you know, one of the biggest things on CocoFab.com, our major topics, you know, have been, you know, your Kim Ye and the Beyonce and baby blue sightings and whatnot. And I think, you know, with Hollywood, they've kind of glamorized, you know, being 16 and pregnant. Hmm. You know, there's this show specifically for these, you know, these teenagers that are cast for being 16 and pregnant. 
Hmm. And with that socioeconomical class, I think you spoke up. Hmm. If there's not, you know, that, that parent or that head of the household who has gone on past high school, it's kind of like, okay, you know what? We surpassed teenage, but we're going into our 20s. If they don't mm -hmm. have that person that kind of encourages them past high school because they have yet to do it themselves, then they're kind of lost. You know, what are they doing past their 20s? So they're having babies. So you say even for 20-somethings, yeah. blame pop culture for sort of the, the romanticization of, uh, of parenthood. We have to leave it there. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, let's talk about this, though. I don't know if you saw this movie over the weekend. A president held hostage in a firefight breaks out in the West Wing. This new movie is out about terrorists taking over the White House. Is this too close to real life? Is this just entertainment? We'll weigh in on that next. Give me the Pentagon on the line now. A kidnapped president, firefights through the West Wing, national landmarks reduced to rubble. I'm talking about this new film. It's called Olympus Has Fallen. New action flick brought in $30 million over this past weekend. The film certainly earns its R rating with uh, gory gunfights. And it certainly seems people didn't shy away from watching the National Mall get torn to shreds by fictional North Korean terrorists. So back to the panel here. Uh, Paul, I want I want you weighing in on this off the top. I mean, yes. is this like a little because too... Because I look like an action hero, right? Uh, that's why obviously, that's first. why I'm going with you perfectly. Um, <laughs> No, seriously, though, I mean, is this, is this too close to home or it's a movie, people? Like, this is entertainment. I mean, look, it's a movie. It's a bit of a fantasy, obviously. But, like, I look, I think we're obsessed with seeing, we like to see things destroyed in this country, unfortunately. I mean, look, if the Hindenburg happened today, people would not be going, oh, no, the humanity. They'd be going, oh, no, I'm out of milk duds. It's just the way we're kind of trained right now. And I think as far as Washington is concerned, it's not necessarily that we want to see the end of Washington, D.C., per se, or the destruction of Washington, D.C. We just want to see something happening in Washington, D.C. That's all. You in Washington, Paul. I don't know what's going on today. Uh, but let me just read this, because you mentioned past the milk duds. I think a lot of people would agree with you. I'm a big fan of David Edelstein, uh, movie critic. He wrote, the carnage here, cruel and crude. Waves of people go down in showers of gore. The audience primed to cheer when a pretty Asian terrorist gets her head blown off. Uh, he goes on, uh, violation and vengeance suggests a kind of addiction. I don't know what it means, but I know these aren't movies really. They're fixes. Rebecca, fixes, addiction. I, what is addiction. with our country's obsession with violence? People want to see their greatest fears realized in a safe environment. And I think that's what's going on here. Personally, for me, this movie is like a sharp stick in my eye. Yeah. And I will not be watching it. It's like banging my head against a trash can. I don't think so. And they always leave me feeling so empty at the end. It's like having sex with someone I don't like. I just, I can't do it. I just can't. I can't. I, I will, not I'm like a silver that. lining. Not touching that. Rita, last okay. word. Last word. <laughs> you know, pretty much. I haven't seen the movie just yet, but I've seen the trailer. And Would you see much it? I haven't seen it just yet, but I plan on seeing it. I like to say, you know what, any and everything that could be close to reality, I want to see it because if I see the signs, I know I need to run. <laughs> but, you know, it is a little, I think, a little really violent. And, uh, but, you know, it, it is fiction. It is just a movie, and people have to understand that. Rita Davis, Rebecca Cardin, Paul Mercurio, and Chris Freitz, my thanks to you all. Hot Topics panel on this Monday. Appreciate it. Now this. Thank you.